all right so now i'll take a color and it's time to discuss more about biological databases okay so biological database okay short form of database db that's what we write okay so what are databases we have been using this term for a long time now we know that uh, databases are what electronic uh, what i can say electronic is is an analogy like a drawer you know in drawers we can organize thing so just like in electronic drawer or cabinet system where we can store our data okay and uh, we can retrieve those data whenever we need them whatever kind of so for different specific type of data we have specific database for open reading frame data we have orf database for single nucleotide polymorphism data we have snp database so we have different kinds of database for example the database for for proteins also there are structural database there are sequence database sequence database is the one from where we get the sequence of uh, the primary sequence of proteins and structural database is where we get the topology of the proteins like that okay so what are some common biological databases and uh, their types so the very first and very common type is a nucleotide database nucleotide sequence database nucleotide sequence database uh, that contains genes and also genome okay genes and genomes both then what we have we have protein databases protein sequences protein sequence in the database form okay then what we what else we have we have macromolecule structures macromolecules particularly the structure like carbohydrates proteins lipids all this what else we have we have a protein protein interaction very important to understand the protein protein interaction to study the pathways those databases are there we also have so let's write metabolic pathways okay so there are different types of numerous metabolic pathways continuing inside of a cell and we have database for that we also have database for gene expression and profiling gene expression database and we also have literature literature okay example of literature we have already talked about pubmed is an example and there are books available in some places but these are the database that carry information okay so database carry information and there is a way uh, so let me take a green color here there is a way to put the data in so feeding the data in and there is also a way to take the data out or extract the data okay so data feeding or input as well as extract both are possible okay and the amount of data that we are dealing with it's increasing day by day with increasing in number of experiments on specific topics the data set that we are expecting is also to be increased okay it's increasing every single day so what we are getting from here is that huge amount of data be it nucleotide sequence protein sequence macromolecule structure protein protein interaction all these different kinds of data and this data need to be placed somewhere in this database there is a way to put the data in there is a way to extract it we have discussed that uh, earlier as well but for forming a biological database it must carry it must have some feature a must have feature there are two must have two must have what i can say two must have features are needed two must have features are needed what are those one is non redundancy non redundancy now what is this now there should not be any redundancy or if there is a redundancy the value of redundancy is very very low that means whenever we put something into this database okay it occurs only once means there should not be any duplicate entry in the same database so 
no duplicacy or you can say no duplicate entry when we are putting the information in there must not be any duplicate entry that is called non redundancy now we try to minimize this redundancy to as low as possible non redundancy is the criteria that we want to achieve but it's not possible always so we always try to go with a low very low redundancy near to non redundancy this is very first feature the second important feature is sharing of the data okay data sharing protocol so basically the database is what it's a reservoir of data reservoir of experimental data scientific data which is actually gathered and stored for the use of science itself for the for the use of exploration of the science itself okay for examination inspection and all so basically this sharing of the data is important it it means that if this is the database for example the network of data data is inside and we said the data is locked the data is locked you cannot access the data you can see the data but you cannot modify if the data has some misinformation or any uh, mistakes that should not be a scientific idea that is a non scientific idea and science is progressive it always uh, explains things from different angles and also the thinking is progressive so we can say that in database whatever data is present the data must be available for sharing so that we can examine the data we can inspect the data and so there is no there shouldn't be any locked data the data must be free to deal with because let's say there are few scientists a group of 30 scientists 30 researchers they put some data in the database uh, with a dna sequence for example a dna sequencing data and then later after 5 years some other group of scientists and researchers are doing the same work they are working with the data they find something now uh, wrong about the earlier data so they can update it there should be a room to do that that is data sharing okay so what we can tell about a database is a collection of data which is normally structured searchable updatable periodically that is known as a database so reservoir of biological data but which is more structurally organized which is searchable and which is updated periodically will be termed as a progressive biological database or simply as a biological database got it this is what biological database is now let's talk about the classification of biological database biological database classification there are different types of database okay so let me give you an idea about the database types here we have sequence database sequence database i am writing short form db means database okay then we have structural database structural database and what else we have 3d structure base 3d structure 3d structure database what else we have we have literature database we have gene expression database and we also have chemical database okay and apart from that there are some accessory some other type of database or miscellaneous databases which is totally separate but these are very common type of database i must say sequence database structured database literature database basically if you are a researcher in any field of life sciences right now then you must have access to literature database at any point of your time and also sequence database and structural database must be accessible and must be required in many cases actually if you are working with some molecular techniques or protein or or any macromolecule other than that chemical databases are also useful so you may need to use that and in future times also the use of this database is going to increase and it's, it's increasing day by day 
because the amount of data is increasing and uh, the requirement to store them and access them when we need uh, when in uh, requirement is also increasing so as the database maintenance increasing okay so we are going to talk about in individual databases here basically you know that uh, this three these databases are quite simple the 3d uh, structured database you say or you can say the literature database gene expression database uh, literature database this one uh, then we have this uh, gene expression database chemical database uh, and other kinds these are simple type the more important one for the exam perspective is uh, the sequence database this one and the structural database and little bit about the 3d structured database as well these three databases are something that you need to understand in details okay so uh, in this point right now let me give you an idea about the rest uh, databases because we will not need many much time then we'll move to the major type for example if you talk about the literature database basically example i told you already pubmed pubmed is an example PubMed Central, basically PMC, a free uh, database there. It provides access to full, free, full text articles for students and researchers. Very, very important, very, very needed, actually. So that is a literature database. It's only about literature, just like online library, e-library kind of thing. And then comes the gene expression database. You know, in gene expression database, there are examples. Uh, it can be uh, of three major subcategories in this, under this. One is the SAGE, S-A-G-E sage map sage map then there is geo g e o all caps and there is gensat all caps g e n s a t all caps okay now apart from that there is also probe uh, is also there let me tell you sage map what is this uh, it's uh, providing a serial analysis of gene expression s a g serial analysis of gene expression okay uh, sage data is stored in the sage map database then we have geo okay this is what this is also another database for high throughput gene expression data gene expression data g gene expression gene expression data so expression profile data is present there in geo database okay repository of this uh, gene expression data which we can retrieve anytime if we need them then we have gene sat what is gene sat or gen sat okay GenSat is basically uh, a database of central nervous system of mouse. Okay, so first of all, it's about mouse and the CNS of mouse, the data that we get from the CNS of mouse. There's a totally separate site that is GenSat, which is maintain, maintained by National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke USA. National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. Okay, and last thing is a probe. Okay. Uh, basically it has it consists of the probe sequences probe sequences basically indicate uh, the intended experimental applications and also the experimental results generating using different probes that we use probe means basically uh, that the, for example a DNA sequence can be a probe so in that case if we use that DNA sequence in different experimental implications then when we can use them and what is the outcome that we are going to get from that those information is available with the help of the probe if you put and search based on the probe you are going to find the complete data what you are going to expect utilizing that probe okay that is all uh, kind of gene expression database and there are chemical databases uh, example pubchem P U B C H E M, PubChem. Okay. Very very popular chemical database is this PubChem, just like PubMed, which is for literature, PMC, and PubChem is for chemical database. Again, hosted by N C B I. Okay. National Center of Bio Biotech Informatics or Biotechnology Information Center. Okay. And now. <clears throat> It contains what about the chemi chemical database means what it should uh, provide us with information structural chemical and biological information basically it has structural chemical and biological information of very small molecule and also if that small molecule any chemical if, if it has any medical role or diagnostic role or therapeutic role we also uh, put that in the pop chem so in pop chem if you search Mm, any small chemical uh, you will find its structure you will find its chemical formula 
if it is available in any biological system when it is produced how it is produced and if that chemical compound is somehow related to diagnostic applications experimental applications or therapeutic applications we can find it out with pubchem okay and the other database there are some examples i i want to draw some examples here that is sgd sgd what is this? this is a genome database of different strain of yeast basically saccharomyces for saccharomyces genes okay so about yeast it's all about yeast different strains of yeast genome database of different variants of yeast and actually is needed because we utilize yeast for fermentation technology for food product production and that is why this database is really useful that's why we create this database in the very first place then we have db est db short est all caps what is it all about ests est means what expressed sequenced tags known as expressed sequence tags okay ests so all information about ESTs we can gather from DBEST and the third thing is Unigene Unigene what is Unigene again uh, it's a database of ESTs ESTs of human being okay that is what Unigene is all about so these are databases where they are very specific towards a particular uh, section of human genome or any other organisms you know that's why we call it, call it as a you know specific type of database which is not a broad scale database like a sequence database or structural database which are broad scale database okay and what is we have we have this uh, three types of database we'll talk about in details that is sequence database first then we'll talk about structural database then third one is the 3d structured database you know the sequence database is very common to that of the nucleotide sequence and uh, that sequence database can be primary sequence secondary sequence type uh, the structural database on the other hand hand is about the protein uh, for the secondary structure super secondary structure domain motif and all this and 3d structure is also about the protein uh, database so let's move on and let's talk about it 